Hi everyone, bonjour tout le monde. Tonight's session will be on analysis and improvement. I'm Geneviève Piloto, Cassie Director of Education and Program. This session will be in English, but as usual, we are happy to take any French questions in the chat. So please feel free to add any question you may have at any point during the session. We'll also make sure to leave a short period of question at the end of the session for if, if there's anything uh, subsisting. Uh, I have with me tonight two national technical team members to present, Michelle Clifford and Nicola Verley. And we also have invited James Island, our new program managers for Ontario, Manitoba and Saskatchewan, to perform some video analysis with us. So without uh, waiting too much, we'll get started. All right, so uh, before getting into it, into analysis, let's review as usual our core and advanced competencies that serves us as a consistent basis for our analysis. So just please take a moment to have a look at your core competencies centered in mobile, turning with the lower body, balance al along the work and edge, advanced competencies, strength and flow, R to arc, loading and deflecting, and steering and versatility. Um, so competencies help us narrow our analysis and be specific about one aspect at the time when delivering improvement. The next videos are varied and they come from different environments such as some of our CASI courses or events and also non-CASI events. Uh, Michelle, James and Nick will each look at a few videos that they will uh, analyze and, and provide some, um, some ANI some specific focus. So please keep in mind that maybe the first thing we see is not the first thing you would see, but that's totally okay. As you know, there are many lenses and uh, we can that we can wear to do our analysis. Uh, our NI will be of course related to core and advanced competencies and the technical skills. So let's get started with the first video. Okay. Um, so we're watching a beginner rider um, shred the slopes here. Um, so a couple of things as I'm watching these riders come down, it's obviously I'm looking, thinking about the competencies um, and how I can help them improve their overall skills, but maybe one of the specific competencies. And as I'm riding, watching this rider, um, one of the big things that, pops out to me is just the position over the board. Um, but then the speed increases. Um, so it was hard to, it's hard to actually see throughout, but this, the, the rider increases the speed over this um, roll or over this pitch. Um, so my thought process here is that maybe the terrain is a little bit too steep to actually get a good um, development strategy going here. Um, and maybe making or bringing this rider to a little less steep terrain, maybe we'll be able to see um, a bit better position over the board and um, some of those competencies or those skills highlighted here. But based on this, the uh, the speed increases and they're, they're almost kind of hanging on. Um, so maybe a tactical approach in some of the development, bringing them to terrain that uh, is less steep giving them opportunity to demonstrate a little bit bigger turns. Um, and we might be able to see a bit more centered position over the board and, and using, uh, or, and sorry, being a little bit more balanced throughout, but you can see quick turns, speeds increasing and, uh, and not really able to create those round symmetrical turn shapes. So granted, this is a beginner rider. Um, so, there's lots of things we could work on, but that's something that I would start with is bringing them to a li little bit less steep terrain and um, getting a little bit more time balancing on the, the edge because there wasn't a lot of opportunity to really get into a good, strong position there. Thanks, Michelle. Yeah. Good. Good thoughts. Um, sorry, I was just going to say for the next uh, video, the next one to analyze, if you want to leave the first bit with the sound, just so people can can hear like the snow and then you can let it go. 
And then just ask me if you need me to turn off the volume. Absolutely. I just like to talk. <laughs> yeah, no, good. I just want to make sure that, the, that people hear you well, because these are great things. Okay, uh, next slide. And that's me, my role. Hmm. I think that's you again, Michelle, eh? This is, yeah. So we'll watch this one through. Not a lot of turns, but over a very big space of time. So as I'm watching this rider, my first fit thought is, whoa, okay, this, this person is going pretty quick. And again, kind of hanging on to his this person's position over the board, not able to really steer the board around. Um, and so the turns are just big, wide open um, and increasing speed. And you'll see as they ride past, the position over the board starts to trend into that back foot a little bit, like, whoa, going too quick here. Um, so, on making it really challenging to actually steer the board, use that lower body to to bring the the turns around, um, and then gradually just continuing to increase the speed throughout. So a strategy I would use to help this rider again is a little bit more of a tactical approach, just with a hey follow me, um, and prescribe the turn shape for this individual, and maybe setting a good track will help promote a little bit more steering and um, use of that lower body. And then the realm that I would work on to continue uh, would be trying to use that pivoting action with the lower body, get a little bit more weight over that front foot so you, they can actually start to, to create smaller turns or change the turn shape. So again, this novice rider is starting to make turns um, bigger turns, use the whole hill, explore the mountain a little bit. So this would work really well in helping change the turn shape by promoting a little bit more um, um, versatility with pivoting um, and turning with that lower body. It's where I would look at spending some time and some development. But again, I think uh, traditional, just follow the me, follow me will help um, help set a good tone and, and set a good turn shape that for this person to mimic and practice on their own. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Michelle. Right. We'll get to the next slide. Uh, let's over to Nick. I think you're on oh, there, yeah there we go all right uh he's done writing so i can talk now um well first thing i think we're going to watch a couple of park uh videos with me uh, so regardless of the trick i think it's important first that you understand the maneuvers um, and how they can be done successfully so that you can actually break it down before you give feedback um so in this video here we're looking at somebody that uh, was in a level three course. So this is a rider that has already their level one, or sorry, their park one certification and they're eligible for their park two. And the maneuver they're trying to do, as you can see, is a 50-50 with the backside 180 out. But they didn't quite get there. Uh, so since this person is uh, eligible for their park two, uh, we're just going to stick to the advanced competencies. More specifically, we're going to look at steering versatility. Um, so for this trick, it's a maneuver that requires like a clear separation between the upper and the lower body and the ability to pre-wind or load the rotation when you're on the box before you actually get to the end. Um, and here we can see that the rider clearly does a pre-wind, but only with their arms. They're not really moving their shoulders. They're not really moving their core or their hips. Um, but there are some good things. He, they got really good balance. They have a pretty good overall position. Their timing is really good. If you see what happens when they get to the end of the box, they have a really good pop and release right when they get to the, the end of the box right there. So that's great. Um, but what kind of movement could this writer do or add to improve on their writing and when to do it? So the first thing I would encourage the writer to do is to focus on that separation between uh, the waist up and the waist down. 
Uh, so they can start by turning their shoulders and their torso just before or just as soon as they get on the box. And they can keep their, uh, their eyes on the end of it. Uh, basically, what that means is when they get to the end of the box, they're going to be looking uphill. And then while they're turning their shoulders and their torso, you focus on keeping the hips and the lower body in line with the feature. So that's where that separation kind of kicks in. And when you coast or pop off the feature, um, it'll help you release the built up tension you have in your hip joint. So the board is actually going to naturally realign with your shoulders when you're in the air. So I would prescribe this kind of feedback or my train of thought to the rider, let them do pretty small box. They can hike it quite a bit. And uh, after a bunch of repetition or even only a couple more tries, I'd be confident that they could get their, their backside in the air. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. I'm monitoring the question, the question in the chat. Okay. Well, big attendance tonight. Thanks everyone for being here. Did I skip one? No, all right. Okay, that's over to me. James, I believe, yeah. Hey everybody. Just want to say thanks to the tech team for inviting me. Um, and as always, I'm using the uh, our competencies as a filter. Um, but one thing I do like to do when I'm visualizing uh, snowboarding, I kind of visualize the idea of the arc, so the turn, and then watching the energy move through the turn. And this can be like, doesn't matter what environment it is, park, bumps, on a groomed run like this. I use that sort of idea of watching the energy move through the arc so that I can really hone in and pinpoint the, the point where things kind of are not optimal. Because what we're trying to do essentially when we're snowboarding is just is moving energy down the hill or redirecting energy down the hill and using the gravity, the, the force that's pushing us down the hill to like have fun, right? So to have the most amount of fun, we have to be able to manipulate um, the board and what's happening. So that's why we go from these core competencies and get up into the advanced competencies because we start doing a little bit more as energy increases. So for this person, it's kind of an intermediate rider, it's groomed terrain, and I'm watching how the energy moves and there's some like starty, stoppy stuff and really quick and then you'll see some chatter, right? And what I like to do is think of a sequence. So a sequence for me that works really well is like I watch the hips move inside the turn at the top of the turn, right? And am I seeing that here? Well, it's coming in late, but it's actually the whole upper body is coming in at the same time. So you almost want the hips to move in first and then they sit on top of, uh, sorry, your shoulders sit on top of those hips. And that brings the mass inside the turn a little bit more effectively so you don't get these big, Ooh moves okay so you watch this rider fully extended way out because they've gone so far inside with that upper body and the hips never really cross right super extended super extended then they get jammed up right and so to get on to the next turn a little bit of rotation before the hips get in there and that's out of sequence and then they don't get grip until later in the turn so first things first hips inside the turn first right that's 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 a no-brainer and then they're actually able to control a lot of what's going on there which is super impressive right they got some good energy happening they have some really good potential so if they just change the sequence of what happens at the start of the turn then all of a sudden at the top of that arc they get to control what what's happening what's happening with the energy do i need to push a little bit more is it time to rotate a little bit more right or maybe i want to rotate less but essentially, if you can control it from the top, you have way more opportunities to have fun. So that's it for that one. If I was to pick a competency there, uh, it would be if it would if I was going to advance, it'd be more of the arc to arc, right? In that transition period, the two part of the arc to arc, that transition I'd be working probably just like position based 
lateral movement kind of thing. And then if I was to pick a core competency, it'd probably be balanced along the working edge because you can see there's like these jamming and full full extended parts where you're not super balanced because you're, you've lost the balance at the top part of the arc. So getting the balance back in the top part of the arc is where I'd work uh, in the core competencies. Thanks, James. That's uh, over to Nick. Back to me. Yeah, so here we have a writer that was on their Park 1 course. So I think we're going to stick with the core competencies here for this one. Uh, so their intended maneuver, they were working on the progression towards front side board slides. So they're doing a 50-50 and then doing a little shifty into the front side board slide, but they're not quite there yet. Um, so with our core competencies, the one that really stands out for me is uh, balanced along the working edge. Or I guess in this case, on a box, the working edge would be none. I'm trying not to use the working edge on the box. Um, this is a maneuver that requires a fair amount of experience riding on boxes. So obviously before you get there, uh, it's probably recommended that you spend quite a bit of time doing 50-50s, getting used to the box, getting used to the feeling of having a flat board um, on a feature like that. Um, and then also this is a maneuver that requires the ability to create rotation with the board while keeping it flat on the box or on a rail. Um, there's not really any good scenarios that can come out of using your edges on this trick. Um, but it also requires you to keep your center of mass centered over the balance point. And I really want to emphasize the balance point of the trick for this feature. So this is a, like, this is a trick that you can do when you're balanced on your front foot on your back foot with the middle of the board, it doesn't really matter, but you need to keep your center of mass over the trick uh, when you're doing it, all right? Um, so here we can see when they drop back in again, we can see that the rider has their shoulders in front of their toes as soon as they get onto the box. And once they initiate a shuffle, their weight goes on uh, in front of their toes and that board goes on edge and then they lose control and they kind of tip over. Uh, so there's a couple of good things coming in uh from the rider they have a really good line of approach their speed and confidence is there they have really good weight distribution over their uh over both feet and as far as the progression is going towards learning how to do a front side board slide they're definitely taking the right steps to get there um but there are a couple of things that they could improve and one of the main things is because they already have a little bit of weight on their toes on the approach you can see that like in slow motion just before they get to the box, you can see they're already kind of pressing on their toes. And then as soon as they get there, they kind of yeah, bobble over. Um, having a bit of weight on your toes is something you kind of naturally do on front side board sides when you're approaching bigger features. But in this case, because they're riding on something that's a little bit smaller, you kind of try to avoid that. Uh, the main thing that they can work on, I think, is to work on keeping their shoulders stacked over their hips and their feet, um, especially when they get on the box and focusing on relaxing their ankles to help kind of keep the board flat and creating a stronger platform as soon as they get on the feature. So keeping your ankles stiff is kind of naturally going to emphasize certain movements. If you have your body weight, maybe leaning a bit forward, but if you relax your ankles a little bit, it maybe gives you a little bit of that range of motion to keep the board flat and maybe help you save a trick like this. Um, so yeah, this way they'll feel a little bit more balanced from the beginning of the trick all the way to the end, and they can focus on uh, being comfortable with the rotation of the movement that turns the 50-15 into a constant board step. Yep. Nice. Thanks, Nick. You're welcome. Hey, I'm back. Okay. So same thing. I just want everybody to watch and see if you can actually see the energy. Like I use this a lot. It's kind of cheesy, but I love like animation and Dragon Ball Z and like just when when those characters push or hit or whatever that you can actually see the energy moving through. Um, and so I like to kind of think about visualizing energy lines. So this guy's pushing that energy to the side of the hill. 
and you can kind of see this is a, a more advanced rider. You can see that he's actually starting to manipulate some forces and, and working definitely inside of those advanced competencies because there's deflection happening, right? There's there's uh, some good round shape and uh, there's a nice arc. There's uh, some good versatility in terms of like they're not exactly the same turn. So he's adapting to the train as he comes down this. This is a steeper black run at Blue Mountain. Um, and it's it's a level two uh, level three short turn that he's trying to accomplish here, so we can use that as a as a reference as well. So the big thing here is uh, the last rider we kind of touched on that first sequence of movements and like moving the hips across. This rider doesn't have as much an issue getting the hips across, but the next thing that you got to do as soon as you get the hips across the board, see he's got he's across, and then he just kind of chills out. Okay, so there's there's a spot right up at the top of the arc where <clears throat> there's potential to start uh, manipulating the energy that you started to create because you've started a new turn. So in order to um, start creating more, we need to do one of two things. Uh, ideally, we start pushing on the board and rotating. And those two forces or those two actions together are gonna help start manipulating and generating more energy in the snowboard, right? Which helps us to then deflect that energy or move that energy through the arc and across the hill. Okay, so for this individual, I would say at the top of the turn, instead of getting on the edge and just kind of hanging out there in a flex position, slight flex down, maybe a couple of inches, and it's not very much, slight flex down, then it's a push away to rotate okay and as you push away you're rotating so you're kind of creating this counter force and that's what's going to torsionally flex the board and it's also going to create uh flex from nose to tail cool so you move across you can see this person we're going to go in slow mo so he moves across he's there and then if he just sunk and then pumped and pushed he wouldn't get that reliance on being at the end of the turn you can see the board whip across there and that's because the top of the turn wasn't utilized as efficiently but still some really good riding um and uh nice nice to see so yeah that's it thanks Tim. back to me again back to me Right. So here, uh, this is a video that I took during a Park 2 course. So you can see the intended maneuvers were a backside 180 and a cab 180. So that's a switch frontside 180, and both were accomplished. Um, so I think here, one thing that's important to say is when you're dealing with this kind of situation, when the rider actually successfully rode away from both tricks and didn't look quite well, you don't necessarily always have to eat the big feedback. They may not ask for it. They may not necessarily need it. Um, sometimes they already know what they're going to be working on and they just kind of need a bit of repetition and mileage. But obviously for the sake of this exercise, uh, we'll break it down. Um, so since it's a part two, we're going to go maybe into advanced competencies and we're going to do this in two parts because there's two tricks. So number one, I think we'll go with arc to arc. And then number two, we'll talk a bit about scan versatility. Um, so there's a lot of good stuff in this video. Um, I love the hand up at the beginning and knowing this writer, I'm fairly confident that they called their dropping, uh, verbally or vocally, sorry, as well. Um, good rotational control, some solid landings on both tricks, good aerial awareness, some good speed, and a pretty good understanding of the hourglass concept. Um, so going on that first jump with the backside 180, uh, I guess we're going to wait till it comes back here. So you can see when the rider initiates, they have nice setup turns on both heels and toes, but they're slightly aggressive on the arcs of the turns, they're kind of tight, right? On the heel edge, it's almost causing the rider to lose a bit of their speed as they're going up the ramp. And then on the toe edge, during that transition, the rider leans forward quite a bit, not dramatic, but it's enough that it's creating a higher edge angle, uh, which basically means it's gonna cause a 
sharper turn and that causes the rider to drift a little bit from right to left across the jump. It's not a huge deal on small jumps, uh, but on bigger features, it can have some serious consequences. So it's pretty, probably not a bad idea to get a, get this right from the beginning with this trick. Um, so what the rider could do to improve on their backside 180s here is simply to have a bit more of an open turn, so kind of creating that a bit more like lining it out or stretching it out, keeping the same turn, but just a bit more open on their approach. And more importantly, to be aware of their inclination and angulation. So leaning into the turn versus using your uh, your knees and ankles to, uh, to control your edging. So I would encourage the rider to focus on using the knees and the ankles on the toe edge uh, to make that turn right before the takeoff instead of leaning forward and then keeping everything the same for the rest. Um, on the second jump, we're looking at a cab 180. You can't really see the setup turns, but we can see right when they get to the takeoff that the board washes up just a little bit. Right there. So the 180 actually starts before they get to the edge of the, or the end of the jump. Uh, so in terms, uh, in terms of like steering versatility, like I said before, we can think about that uh, separation from the upper and the lower body. Um, and we can see that the rider here is not is focused on keeping a pretty nice heel grip, but at the same time, uh, because the board's watching out. So what I would do to help the rider here is tell them to focus on keeping that heel side grip like they already have, but also to keep their hips in line with the board right until they get to the edge of the lip. And once the rider gets to the edge of the lip, they can snap their hips a little bit, and that's going to let the lower body follow the rotation that the upper body already initiated with the pre-wind and then the execution of the trick. Uh, so that's a bit more in line with steering versatility, like I said, and a little bit of uh, timing and coordination. Thanks, Nick. Yeah. Stop. Um, next video. Advanced Rider. Yo. Okay. So um, just take a look at the transition um, from heel edge to toe edge, toe edge to heel edge. Right. Now, up. Right now up. See that like off the tail, have to come up really tall to get onto the new edge. So this rider doesn't have a problem pushing energy um, through the arc. Like he's he's fairly stable, right? We we core competencies are there, advanced competencies are are pretty clear that he's able to um, sort of load and deflect the board for sure. Now. When we look at these advanced competencies, we have to think about um, the outcome that we're trying to achieve. So, yes, this rider is loading up the board and deflecting, but a lot of the energy happens to be deflecting up off the snow and not into the next turn, right? Because there's that big vertical move that happens at the end of the turn at the edge change. So that's telling me something's happening during the arc that's forcing this rider because he, he he's obviously a strong rider um he's forcing this rider to really accentuate that unweighted movement at the end of the turn in order to get onto the new edge so we can see just take a look right when he changes edge here fully straight legs and then there's not a lot of vertical movement down to establish grip at the top and it's very very kind of chilled out through the whole arc and then at the end he has to make that move right so if you were to uh, instead of making all of those movements right at the end of the turn start to make some of that vertical movement inside of the arc two things are going to happen you're going to establish better grip earlier which is going to stabilize your board bend your board earlier which is going to round out those turns and tighten them up a little bit which makes the carve and the energy movement easier to move the energy into the next turn and instead of having to rely on that super big vertical movement at the end. Okay, so it's, it's about just 
you can even see he folded there a little bit on the, as he moved on to that toe side edge. So move on top, get down a little bit, push and drive throughout the turn a little bit more actively, right? And then that also allows you to incline more if you want to get even more aggressive, right? So we have to get lower, hips inside lower earlier and start pushing lower from a lower position earlier in a carve turn, especially like a, an advanced rider like this. This person was on the level four course and this is what we're expecting at, at that level. So your ability to get onto the board, onto the edge and not rely on like creating these movements at the end of the turn to get into the next turn. It's all about utilizing the top part of the arc so that you're able to push all of that energy and almost the last, I don't know, third or not even maybe not quite third, but the last quarter of the turn is, is kind of just done. Like you shouldn't be doing a lot by that point. It's almost the transition phase, right? Mm -hmm. So don't think about doing all the performance and all the pushing at the end. Think about trying to get a little bit more of that up in the top part of the arc. So separating, getting inside with the hips, getting a little bit low vertically, lean, push, drive. That's it. Thanks, James. I think that's our last video. Uh, Nick? It's me again. All right. <laughs> you chose a lot of park stuff i sure did uh yeah so here we have this was during a park one course um so this rider is trying to do a backside 180 and to kind of get there that's a backside 180 um a couple of elements missing though um so since it's on a park one we can think about our core competencies here and we're going to focus on centered and mobile body position um, there's a lot of good stuff, generally good body position while dropping in. Um, this rider has a good understanding of the setup turns. They have really good grip on the takeoff and they get their 180 all the way around. Um, some things that they could do to improve. Well, the first thing would be to be comfortable with the speed. So as we can see, they don't. All the way to the sweet spot. They kind of barely get over uh, that kind of on the back of the jump. Oh. Um, could be unintentional. Yeah. Can you just repeat that last sentence? Because you, you froze for a couple seconds there. Oh, yeah. No worries. I was just saying that uh, they could work on their speed, be more comfortable with the speed, because they kind of just get over the lip and not quite to the sweet, uh, the sweet spot of the jump. They just hit the deck. Um, so we can see that on their setup turns, the rider kind of slides their turns a little bit. And that causes a big drop in the speed and they barely get past the lip. It could be unintentional, uh, but you can also see as soon as they start going up the lip that they're in the back seat a little bit. They're kind of leaning back away from uh, the drop and they're keeping their center mass more uphill. And that holds true right until they get to the landing. Um, so the main thing to do would be to get a lot of repetition doing straight airs and other tricks that they're comfortable with to gain some confidence with that feature and trusting the speed, including during the setup turns for rotations. Um, and then the other thing that we can look at is where the rider is looking. So we can see right when they're on the jump, they're actually keeping their eyes on the lip. I don't know if Jen, if Jen you're able to pause, like right there, maybe on the next pass. Um, but we can see where their uh, center of mass goes when they keep their eyes like that. Your body tends to go where you're looking. So if you're looking uphill, then your weight's going to carry you that way. All right. Um, you can see that when they're starting their rotation, they're keeping their eyes on the lip of the jump. And the lip of the jump is an uphill feature. All right. Uh, for this maneuver, I always suggest keeping your eyes on the landing, which is a downhill feature. All right. You end up looking uphill when you land, but it's going to help you keep you balanced when you're in the air. And it's also going to take away that feeling of being blind in the air. You know where you're going. You can see where you're going. Even though you land looking uphill, you're still looking in the direction you're traveling in right until you put your feet on the ground. Once you land the trick, you steady yourself, and then you can turn your head and look where you're going. 
Um, that same concept applies for a front side 360, a backside 540, et cetera. All those tricks end with a backside 180. So when you're in the air, when you're traveling, you can keep your eyes on the landing. By the time you land, your body turns, but you're looking uphill. But at least you're going to keep your center of mass traveling uh, down the slope. If you have the right speed uh, for the feature and keep your eyes on the landing, it, help, it should help keep the rider, get their momentum going downhill when they land. And it's going to make it easier to stomp a trick like this. Thanks, Nick. No worries. All right, team, do you have, before we look into this slide, do you have anything to add uh, for some of these videos? If there's anything that that you think you, you want to have? <laughs> Nope. You don't have to. <laughs> uh, good. All good. Thanks. Good job, everybody. That was good, really good stuff. I'm sure uh, people appreciate. Uh, there was something in the, someone in the chat just before I look into the next slide. Sorry, it seems like the link that you've got uh, that got posted on Facebook and Instagram was not the right one. It was like the for the next session. So hopefully you log into your email with the right email. We'll make sure that uh, we're checking this for the next one. So thanks for letting us know. Um, so as we have talked about this exercise last fall, the one that you see on the screen right now, um, in our last, in one of our last A and I session last uh, last fall, it doesn't get old, and we do encourage you to practice it with videos, uh, either videos at home or videos that like whatever you find that you want to analyze. Um, to, to train your analysis skills and also to keep in mind that when you work with student, keep this in mind. Uh, when when you teach lesson at the resorts or at the club, uh, of course, more you do it easier and more natural it becomes as you know uh, so you can do the same with each of the competencies and skills and ask yourself these questions so look at the big picture first establish the context as you heard through the session everybody was doing that through their analysis so establish the context the student's intention and then you can start narrowing your focus by looking at the snowboard looking at the snow, looking at the body parts, you can either even separate them. And then you also want to try to only hear uh, the snowboarding or listen to the snow. Sometimes that's that's a good sign. That's good to match what you're seeing to what you're hearing. Um, look at the rider speeds, symmetry and rhythm. And then when you're uh, getting into a more your your improvement you, you can give a specific focus so delivering improvement with what movement should the rider add or modify uh, where should they they had it in their turns to improve uh, what is the intensity or the quantity they need so the the when and how much right so less more moderation is the improvement a small specific change or is this a starting point for a lesson so don't worry if you want to have a look at that, it's going to be, the session is going to be posted on our YouTube channel, just like all of our other session, every session that we do online. Uh, normally we post it the next day. So you can screenshot this if that's something you find it's useful. Um, so thank you for attending tonight. This was our second online member session for the fall and it was our first one a and i we have another session the next one would be in french on october 22nd and uh we'll we'll do it again with another team of people and uh, as we say you can find them on our youtube channel and stay tuned for the next session thanks everybody <laughs>